Hey guys, welcome to episode number 268. Today is Wednesday, so it's DIY Wednesday, and today I wanted to walk through my redundant solenoid powered drip system. Um, this has basically two main uses, the first of which is to make sure that my sump system will never overflow in the event that there's a power outage because this drip will shut off. Um, and the other use is to make sure that I don't continue to add water um, to this barrel if for some reason there's a backup or a blockage or some sort of problem with my sump pump and there's too much water uh, in this barrel to begin with. So let's walk through the electrical diagram very quickly and then I'll walk through all the components and uh, how the electrical works, how the plumbing works and um, you know what you can do to, to set one up yourself. So we start here with our 12 volt adapter um, going into the wall. From there we have a positive wire which goes to our normally closed float switch a normally closed float switch means that the electricity is going to be passing through it normally but when the float switch rises it becomes open and it opens the circuit which means that it disconnects the power and it shuts the power off um, from the rest of the loop so from there the power comes back out and it goes into all of our electronic parts uh, that we're going to power in this case, we have just a basic computer fan um, to blow air across, and then these two solenoids. So we have three things plugged in here, uh, and the, the solenoids run kind of in series here. Um, so the water has to pass through one, pass through the other, in order to drip through the tank. That's why it's redundant. If one fails for whatever reason, if one sticks for whatever reason, there's another one and uh, we want to make sure um, you know that at least one is is operational um, anyways from there the negative um, wire connects back through uh, to our first terminal and then that completes the circuit pretty simple circuit basically the two conditions under which this fails is if you see it's dripping down there if I unplug this power right here right our drip automatically stops and that's because these solenoids are uh, electromagnets basically um, there's a coil of wire in here and when electricity um, is powering that coil there's a little um, there's a little piece of metal that uh, is basically forced up into the electromagnet and it allows the water to go through um, now without power obviously that electromagnet shuts off and and that piece of metal goes back down and it um, shuts the flow of water off but plug this back in sorry it's kinda hard to do with one hand you hear the noise and uh, that was the electromagnet turning back on and now the drips back on uh, there's a couple air bubbles in it so it's gonna sputter a little bit but now it's back up and functional. Um, we do have the quarter inch drip line connected through that. Uh, we do have some fittings here which have some Teflon tape on them to make sure nothing leaks or drips. And as I've said, they're in, uh, you know, they're in parallel here so that the water has to get through both in order to get into the tank. If one of them for whatever reason burns out, what's probably going to happen is that piece of metal is going to drop and it's going to shut off but um, if something for whatever reason sticks in the upward position we want to make sure we have two just to be a hundred percent sure that a hundred percent of the time um, this is going to function the way we want it to now the most important thing when picking a solenoid valve uh, as i learned is to find one that says 100 percent ed and basically what that means is it's rated for continuous use. A lot of solenoid valves out there are not rated for continuous use. And what that means is this electromagnet will heat up um, to a very high temperature and uh, actually to the point where your components could fail. Uh, and in this case, since we have plastic components and we've got water, um, you know, things might actually start to drip and leak 
and uh, bad things will happen. Um, you know, it could be a fire hazard, but 100% ED, continuous duty, is what you're looking for. And in this case, we have two of them. So that water is going to go back down into there, um, and everything works fine. The other failure um, state to this uh, in, involves this float switch, and you see we've added a second float switch here. Uh, if the water level in this third barrel, for whatever reason, gets too high, this float switch will activate. I've pulled up on that float switch, and as you can see, the water stopped. I'll let the float switch drop, and there you go. It's completing the circuit again. The circuit's broken. The circuit's back in operation. So that right there is pretty much uh, the solenoid system in a nutshell. Uh, you guys are probably familiar with my three-stage carbon filter that I have over here. I've got the cold water line connected to um, a sediment filter, two chloramine filters going through a 40 gallon per day drip line which goes up along the ceiling here and over into the solenoids. So now I have 40 gallons per day dripping into my tank but only under the conditions um, that I want. So I'm pretty much guaranteed to never have a water event here in the basement um, due to this drip line continuing to function when it shouldn't be functioning. And that's all thanks to our solenoid valves here. I decided to mount it on the wall um, above the, the second barrel because that's where I want the, the water dripping in. And um, a, a couple of people actually asked why I was dripping into uh, the second barrel, which is close to my overflow tube, instead of uh, one of my other barrels or into one of my tanks. And, uh, you know, that's just because the amount of water dripping out of that compared to the amount of water that that pump is pulling in is pretty much insignificant. It is 40 gallons per day, but um, by volume in this barrel, uh, it's like less than a tenth of 1% of the total water volume in this barrel at any given time. Um, most of that is getting pulled in by the pump and it's going into the aquariums. The rest of it is uh, exiting this barrel as wastewater. So anyways guys, that's the second project here with these um, float switches and um, it's actually you know one of my first projects involving both electricity and water so a little nervous about that uh, I do need to stow some of these wires a little bit better and get some of this uh, um, plumbing um, figured out a little bit better it's it's still kind of all over the place but for right now it's operational it's protecting my fish room and I'm pretty happy uh, about all of the components that I've put together here. Again, the air is blowing across the solenoid to keep them cool. Um, this aluminum stays pretty cool on its own, but uh, I also mounted it on an aluminum plate to allow some of that heat to dissipate um, through the plate. And of course, cold water is running through that line all day, every day. So it's also going to cool down this aluminum. Uh, the top piece of the solenoid might get a little warm to the touch, um, but it's certainly not going to reach any sort of temperature um, that would make me concerned. So anyways guys, that's what we've got going. If you have any questions on this system, how it operates, why you should install one, let me know. It's a pretty simple project. I'd say it's probably about $50 in components total. And uh, you know the the best thing to do is to look for a really high quality uh, solenoid valve, and you can find those pretty cheap on Amazon or eBay. You don't have to go to a specialty store to get those. Um, and that's about all we've got. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys later.